Open your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 2, please. 2 Peter chapter 2. The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. It is important to know that in the last days, Satan, what he's trying to do with our world and what he's going to do. Billy Graham. Now that he passed away, what's going to happen next? Amen. I really hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Amen. The thing is, is that after Billy Graham has passed away, you got to realize it's a significant event because everyone is looking up to him. I mean, even the liberal news media likes him. And then when you have the world praising you, then there's something wrong with your ministry. Now, you know what I find pretty odd about this is that how the liberal news media, they would even critique Rick Warren and even Joel Osteen, but Billy Graham, he's such a really high guy that they leave him be. And not only that, if you look, here's something else I want to add. If you look at a lot of his video clips and the reports about after he passed away, it looked like a fundamental, independent Baptist Christian. Some of you might say no, but actually it is. A lot of it is true. He had a concern for souls. He gave that impression. He, uh, he actually quoted D.L. Moody. Uh, Franklin Graham, in Good Morning America, when he described the death of his father, his father told him to say to the world that a quote from D.L. Moody, or from some famous preacher back then, that when they tell you that Billy Graham is dead, the news tell you Billy Graham is dead, don't you believe a word of it. I'm more alive than I ever was before. And amen. Yeah, you're right. Amen. That is amen. That sounds like an independent, fundamental Baptist. Not only that, Franklin Graham tried to give the gospel a bit at the Good Morning America as well. So the thing is, see, this is a very dangerous person because what you can see in him is that it looks like a genuine, sincere man who wanted souls to die, uh, who wanted souls to go to heaven after they died. I mean, this really looks like one of us. And guess what? He was one of us. If you look at the Billy Graham movie, he used to street preach like we did. He was in line with Bob Jones Sr. before Bob Jones University fell away. He was with fundamentalists. And here's a secret that people don't tell you, but I guess it'll be online now. So, if hey, you know, I'm going to just say this. An unfounded source, all right, so I can't prove it. An unfounded source, Billy Graham wanted Dr. Ruckman to join him in his evangelism. So the thing is this, Billy Graham, he was in line with us. So he knew that mentality, see? But he became the most dangerous preacher ever, more than Joel Osteen and Rick Warren. You know why he appears as one of us, a person who cares about souls getting saved? And if you look at his gospel clips, uh, the thing is, is that people can catch him where he doesn't give the gospel clearly and incorrectly. But here's another thing, is that you got to realize this Billy Graham, he's a chameleon. So in those clips, he may not give the gospel clearly, but then when people accuse him, you're not giving the gospel of Jesus Christ, there are other clips where he does give the gospel clearly. And he even bashes, it's not through Buddha, it's not through Muhammad. he even said that. So he can fool a lot of Christian churches. So I'm not going to condemn him in his gospel presentation. Because some of the Christians out there might say, no, he does give the gospel clearly, you can, and they'll show a video clip of that, which is true. What I'm going to accuse him of is that he is such a compromiser to a world where he can adapt to their level, and because he can adapt to their level, he can please the liberals, he can please the Muslims, the Catholics, and he can please fundamental evangelical Christians to fool them. That's why he's the most dangerous person. Let me ask you this. If a man like that can successfully deceive all you Christian churches out there, yeah. what do you think the Antichrist will do? Yeah, right. Now, before you accuse me where I'm being so mean, what's going to happen to him after he dies? He's not the last one. There's going to be more. That's what's going to happen. At, since he passed away, you know how many pastors are looking up to him and they're going to follow his example? 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who what? Publicly? 
No, privately, privately, <coughs> shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Look at that. Keep reading. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be what? Evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with what? Vain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Notice right here that there will be false teachers rising up in the last days. The Bible predicted that. The Bible says that these people are going to come out in the last days and verse 18, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. These preachers are going to come out through feigned words. And Billy Graham, he had such nice words. And you know what? The liberal news media, they were actually touched when Franklin Graham said what his father said. Don't tell them that I'm dead, but I'm more alive than, any be than ever before. And those liberal news reports were going all oh, like that, like they're touched. And it's biblical, what he said too. But you know, see, the point is this. It's not a point of, <clears throat> uh, it's not a point of catching something where you can find wrong with him. It's the heart and the spirit, the method behind it. Why did he say that? Because he knew for Good Morning America, for that particular liberal news media, that biblical statement will not offend them. But there's a, another biblical statement that can offend them. He just doesn't have to mention that. That's why he can fool a lot of people that what he says is biblical. But see, that's the problem. The problem is, is that when you go through Billy Graham's lifestyle, he will try to do what is biblical, but he's not going to give the full counsel of God. And what did Paul say at the book of Acts? He said at the book of Acts that I have not failed to give you all, all the counsel of God. That's Billy Graham's problem. How do we know that he's such a compromiser to the world? How do we know that he messed up? <clears throat> I'm not saying 2 Peter chapter 2 is speaking of Billy Graham. Billy Graham, I can take it for granted. I will let him go that he's a saved person. If some of you think that he's lost, okay, we'll see what will happen at the end too. He could be lost. But the point is this, the point is, is that if, let's assume, I'm going to go for this side, that way people online don't get offended at this video who are on Billy Graham's side. Let's say that Billy Graham is a saved person, he's a saved Christian, and you know he used to be one of us like I told you. Let's say he used to be a saved Christian. What's going to happen to him now? Well, what's going to happen next is 2 Peter 2, there's going to be preachers who look up to him, and they do, right? They're going to follow his example. That's who 2 Peter 2 is talking about, those preachers, if not Billy Graham. They're going to come in, and they're going to deceive many people, and they're going to follow Billy Graham's method. But not only that, they're going to do it unbiblically as well. Because Billy Graham, unlike them, was raised in that old-time revival meetings, the fundamentalists, so he should have known better. But people in this modern day and age who are born... What's going to happen when they follow his method? And they don't have that grounded, firm knowledge foundation like he did at the Fundamentals of Faith back then. <clears throat> What's going to happen to Billy Graham? Go to 2 John. 2 John. Let's assume he's saved. I'll tell you what's going to happen to him when he goes to heaven. You know what's going to happen to him when he goes to heaven if he's saved? I'll tell you what. He's going to lose all of his rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. He's going to lose it all. You might say, no, he won't. Yes, he will. Look at Second, uh, second John. Look at verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a what? Full reward. The apostles writing here, look to yourself that uh, you don't lose something. Lose what? You're going to make sure you get a full reward for it. So make sure you don't lose it. A full reward. What makes you lose a full reward? You're going to find out here there is one sin you do not want to commit that can make you lose everything at the judgment seat of Christ. And I'm not talking about sodomy, and I'm not talking about murder, and I'm not talking about those sins. Those sins are really heinous, 
but there is one thing that can make you lose a lot of rewards or a full reward. What is that? Look at verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the what? Doctrine, doctrine of Christ. Do Muslims abide in the doctrine of Christ? Do Catholics abide in the doctrine of Christ? Do Seventh-day Adventists do? No. Do Jehovah Witnesses? No. Do Mormons? No. Do Jews? No. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, what happens? Receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Has Billy Graham joined hands with such people who did not abide in the doctrine of Christ? Yeah, yes. Yeah. And because of that, look at verse 11. For he that beateth him Godspeed is what? Partaker of his evil deeds. He loses his full reward and joins because he joined the wicked. He's not going to hell if he's a saved Christian. But guess what? He fallen so much into apostasy that he can lose a full reward at the judgment seat of Christ. As a matter of fact, this is even an eternal security verse. You got to realize this. People don't think a saved Christian is capable of doing that. Never think like that. If you think like that, the devil's going to take advantage of you. You got to realize any saved Christian out there is capable of doing the worst kind of things. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> this verse is evidence that, see, you're not going to the great white throne of judgment for hell, but you go to the judgment seat of Christ for saved Christians, and he just loses the rewards. See that? So it's very possible he can be a saved person. So he can lose the full rewards. Why? Because of ecumenical. That's the thing a Christian should never be. If you do this, you lose everything. By the grace of God, our church will never, ever become like that. That's right. And I'm sorry if I kick some preachers out there that are your heroes and that you people watch or like to listen to. I'm not going to hold hands with them. Amen. Period. Amen. Period. I will keep kicking them. Because I'm responsible for giving people the truth. I could lose my... I don't want to lose this. In fact, it's gotten so bad for Billy Graham, it is so possible that he can lose everything. So Billy Graham should know this. Especially if he hung around with fundamentalists and knew of Dr. Ruckman, he should know this kind of stuff and should scare him. So you'll see these news reports of him showing where he's like ready to die, he'll see God and stuff like that. But you know, I told you, he's a chameleon every stinking time. If you look at his other reports, it shows him unsure and scared, and even he's afraid of, go of not even going to heaven. Yep. What? Yeah, that's how... If you, all you have to do is not live right for Jesus Christ and do the worst kinds of things, and you know what's going to happen? You're going to doubt your salvation. Amen. Billy Graham, no, yeah. Oh, but he said, I'm sure that I can go to heaven before he died. Yeah, because he's a chameleon. But you didn't look at the older news report, right? Here's one from January 2nd, 2000. His interview with Tony Snow at Fox News. Quote, Snow says, when you get to heaven, who's going to speak first, you or God? Graham says, when I get there, I'm sure that Jesus is going to say that he will welcome me, but I think that he's going to say, well done, our good and faithful servant. Or he may say, you're in the wrong place. <clears throat> they, didn't, they didn't play that, did you? See, they only show you clips where he's speaking biblical things and he wants souls to get saved. I'm sure I can go to heaven after I die. I told you this guy is dangerous. He's a chameleon. All of you guys got sucker, didn't you, you Christians? <clears throat> Let me keep reading. Snow was like, what? Like you, right? Like, what in the world? So Snow said, you really worry that you may be told you're in the wrong place? You won't believe what Graham says. Yes, because I have not, I'm not a righteous man. People put me up on a pedestal. That's right, news always lies. Picturing Billy Graham, the great guy. People put me up on a pedestal that I don't belong in my personal life. And they think that I am better than I am. I'm not the good man that people think I am. Newspapers and magazines and television have made me out to be a saint. I'm not. He's getting under conviction. Something's telling him he's doing something wrong. 
But you know what he says after that? I'm not a Mother Teresa, and I feel that very much. What in the world? Why would he label himself with a Catholic saint? And she's not even a saint. She's a Catholic believing her belief. She's in hell right now. She's not even a saint. How far have the mighty fallen? He is the greatest evidence of a Christian can do, a saved Christian can do the worst kind of things if he is a saved Christian. You know how we know that he's messed up? I'll tell you why we know that he's definitely a part of the world system. The, then James chapter 4, verse 4 says, He adulterers and adulteresses, knowing not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whosoever is a friend of the world is what? An enemy of God. That's why we know Billy Graham is not right with God. Why? Because of James 4. We know he's not right with God. Let me tell you that he's definitely a friend of the world. He is known as Gallup's 10 most admired men in the world for 40 years. Hollywood, wicked, wicked evil Hollywood has his name on their cement payment on the street, a star with his name on it. Hollywood, when you got Hollywood, you're, you're, you're in messed up trouble right there. I don't know if even Rick Warren has that. He received an honorary doctor of humane letters on November 22nd, 1967 from the, Catholic, from the Catholic Belmont Abbey College in Belmont, North Carolina. Another thing is this is that this is a secret, so you can't really find it, but you'll also see him labeled receiving acceptance with Freemasonry. And as you know about the elites, a lot of them are connected with Masonry. It would make sense that if Billy Graham joined that bunch and the elites have such power controlling the news media, then you got to realize this, no wonder they will give him a very good word when you're lined up with something wicked like the Illuminati. <gasps> I'm not sure if he's part with the Illuminati or elites, but I do know he's part with the Freemasons, and you have to be a very powerful person to get Hollywood, put your name in there, and the news media always saying nice things about you when they don't do that for even Joel Osteen. Fishy, fishy, fishy. But let me just give this documentation. The History of Freemasonry, Its Legendary Origins by Albert Gallatin Mackey. And the publishers, you know what they put at the inside flap? It's an imprint from Random House Value Publishing. They put this. The Fraternal Order of Free and Accepted Masons, or Freemasons, is a secret society yet its influence and effect on Western society in general and American society and government in particular have been great. George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, John Hancock, Mark Twain, Henry Ford, Billy Graham, Arnold Palmer, Wolfgang Amadeus, uh, Mozart, Franz Joseph Hayden, Voltaire, jo Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Tony Blair, all are Freemasons end of quote. And this ain't an amateur source either. You know what Billy Graham said when he received uh, his doctorate from the Catholic Belmont Abbey College? He said about the school, the gospel that built this school and the gospel that brings me here tonight is still the way to salvation. Okay, look at this man. I mean, Maybe he's not connected with the Illuminati, but good night, nurse. How much New World Order can you get than that? He's connected with Masons. He's connected with powerful elites. Powerful elites defend him. You got George Bush, fishy stuff with conspiracies. You got the Bush and presidents. Clinton, those guys, all fishy with conspiracy. He's... he's He's in bunch and befriended by presidents, and not only that, Catholics. And he's guiding people to the Catholic Church. 
If there was a false prophet at the book of Revelation, this man would have been the perfect false prophet at Revelation, guiding people to mother whore the Catholic Church. You know why? Because he's doing this to save your soul. He gives you that impression. I want you to get saved. Let's get saved and follow Mother Church because that gospel that I'm preaching to you is the same thing that Mother Church would do. If there is a false prophet of Revelation, this man would have been the great one, a perfect one for that one. And, you, and he got you Christians fooled. Yeah. And if he can fool you, how much more the Antichrist when his deception happens? Yeah. That should scare the socks out of you. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to give documentation for people who doubt me. It's written by Paul Smith. Title is Billy Graham. World is facing a final shaking. Belmont Abbey confers honorary degree by the Gastonia Gazette, 22nd of November, 1967, A1. And then that Fox News interview, go to January 2nd, 2000, interview with Tony Snow at Fox News, if YouTube still has it, or Google still has it. I wonder. I would like to well, uh, I would also like to advertise William Grady's book, How Satan Turned America Against God. He gives really interesting, deep details, even conspiracies and roundtable, uh, about America at its early beginning, masonry. And you'd be surprised how much of the conspiracies are true and even false. He went through heavy documentation on that. It's not as sinister as you think, and it's not as innocent as you think what the elites are doing. So his book is very balanced on that one.